Local emergency managers are working with their state counterparts to prepare for this year's hurricane season. News for Jack's reporter Aaron Farrar was at a roundtable with them and breaks down each county's biggest priorities. Representatives from five different counties met here at JFRD headquarters to talk about what their counties need to handle what's expected to be a pretty busy hurricane season. Uh, you know, larger. It was at this round table in downtown Jacksonville where leaders of each county's emergency management team detail things they need ahead of this hurricane season. Duval County may need more help with staffing shelters if it needed to open all of them. There are more than 30. Duval County also has 34 different points where it hands out supplies like water and food if needed. It also says it may need other help from the state depending on the severity of the storm. We could potentially reach out to the state if the, the damage is severe. We may need additional personnel to assist us and heavy equipment to assist us with the ERAT teams. St. Johns County and Nassau County have similar needs. They feel like they need additional assistance if a storm is stronger and lasts longer. That includes help with recovery and long-term shelters. We've been pretty impacted for the last several years, and so it's, it's very uh, you know, uh, difficult to make sure that we are uh, recovered fast and bringing in sand and bringing in those, those types of uh, uh, equipment and things that we need. Depending on how big the event could become or how prolonged, um, you just may run out of personnel that uh, can continue to do that over a long period of time. Baker County says it may need the state's help with personnel and getting people supplies they need. We're looking to try, try to use some of our faith-based organizations and houses of worship to actually do those on a smaller area to take those supplies to where the citizenry is rather than to put them on the road. Finally, Putnam County also needs help with staffing and flood control equipment. We stood up a long-term recovery group and we're, we're really trying our hardest to get that off the ground and, and hopefully that'll provide a little bit of a lift for some of the staffing issues that we have. Uh, but we do have sitting on the show. All of those were heard by Kevin uh, Guthrie, right the state's yeah, emergency management director. Now it's time to get resources ready early to avoid a scramble in the middle of a disaster. Knowing what they're going to need from whether that shelter staff augmentation, EOC staff augmentation, um, it, whether they need the National Guard or they need private sector individuals to come in and help out, getting their economy back up and running, making sure their roads are accessible right after the storm. Preparing ahead of the 2024 hurricane season. The state's top emergency management director says there are a few moves homeowners should make now to prepare themselves. First, make a plan. That starts with knowing your evacuation zone. You can find yours on your county's emergency management website. It's also important to remember this is different from your flood zone. Also know your home. If your home is built after 2004, it should be able to handle high winds. But if you live in a trailer or a manufactured home, you'll always be encouraged to evacuate. Now is also the time to start building your emergency kit. He recommends taking stock of what you have, then buying what you need during the sales tax holiday, which starts next week. If you're strapped for cash, food and water should be a priority as well. Finally, keep your cars fueled or fully charged. He says you should consider half full as empty, and that's the point when you should top off your car. That'll cut down on the number of people trying to get gas during a storm or evacuation overall.